I'm ready. Sean, what about you? Uh, well, I have my fist cocked too, DJ Wheat. So let's uh, go directly. Oh, yeah. Oh, baby. Let's go into game three between Root Gaming's QXC and Zerax. QXC one game away from the win. And oh my gosh, Zerax hoping to do the reverse all kill. Let's hit it. Link engaged. Hedge Hedge, and welcome back, ladies and gents and viewers of all sorts. We got Zerax in the left position as the blue Protoss pieces Zerax from Bulgaria and QXC, who's currently in Finland while studying abroad in Spain, hailing from Harvey Mudd College in the United States. He is the Purple Terran up north, and in these close positions, we saw absolute total demolishment and wreckery by Zerax against Straylock, but right now I'm thinking that QXC is going to be a little happier about these close spots. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you too, and you know, I think when it comes down to it, QXC, he's always had the Hellion builds, whether he wants to go to Banshees, we've seen him do, you know, just specific racks pushes early on, etc. So, you know, the big thing that I'm going to be looking for today is that I kind of expect that out of QXC. What I'm kind of looking for now is how is Zerax going to spend that initial gas? We've seen him put it down on the Robo facility, then go with the the Sentry, then go with the uh, you know with the Warp Gate. Is there any sort of rearranging of how he spends that gas uh, that we'll see based off of what happened in that last game? You know, I think the cleverest response would be to instead of save that saving that Chrono Boost. Uh, or excuse me, yeah, instead of saving that Chrono Boost, just Chrono Boost those two sentries out, because I think you can get two Force Fields up in time, and maybe even end up getting a Stalker out after that. You will always want to keep your build as close to what you have practiced as possible. You don't want to do anything crazy like suddenly get a Stalker and then realize, oh, whoops, don't have enough money for an Immortal, and then, oh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> so... Yeah, but then no, you start no I mean, and actually, it was. I was wondering about that too because I was wondering, oh, if he could just chrono this immortal, maybe it would make this uh, Hellion harass <laughs> much less effective. But obviously, not the case. So, yep, you do see that probes continuing to pop out for Zerax. He's scouting around. Uh, barracks going down for QXC. Oh no, did he see that barracks? No, he has no idea that the barracks is going down. Oh, very sneaky QXC. Yeah, I was uh, taking a look over there too as well. So yeah, uh, we're going to have a much later factory over here. And uh, we're going to have the cybernetic score go ahead and go down. So, you know, instantly I think that's going to give a little bit more uh, merit here to uh, what Zerax is going to be able to do. He seems to sort of like ride that fine line similar to a Zerg there. And uh, what can he get out and what can he stop? He can single force field a ramp. So it does give him some uh, wiggle room here. And there's the robo facility going down so you know i i just uh i was uh, in between games i was kind of looking on team liquid and someone said xerox does one build and qxc just figured that out now he's not going for the exact same thing but assuming that he is uh that qxc is going to have an opponent go for the exact same thing will he be able to combat it and here he goes Wow, QXC getting aggressive with two Marines. This is exactly the opposite of what you expect when you're doing this sort of build. You generally always expect someone to be popping in there. Once they have three Marauders, couple Marines, that's the time when you end up getting your Immortal out. But with this timing, look at this. QXC already managing to pick off some probes at the front, completely putting Xerax outside his comfort zone. Picks off one probe, picks off another probe. Three probe kills already. And there's the Chrono Boost on more workers. Xerax getting the Observer out. I think that is an extremely prudent move along with the Stalker. Zerax playing very, 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 very calmly. Yeah, get that Observer out. See what is going on. He knows that it's got to be more than anything that he has put out in the, the last two games. Uh, or different, rather. And we do still have uh, this Tech Lab Barracks. And, of course, bringing out the Marauders and uh, Reactor Barracks. Uh, just launching out those Marines. Looks like uh, QXC might be getting a little bit anxious here. And goes, I want to tickle this guy a little bit. And when I say tickle, I mean I want to shoot him with my Marines and Marauders. And uh, all he's got right now is... <laughs> that uh, single sentry but it does have uh, quite a bit of energy on it so we'll see what QXC does. Okay so QXC is beginning to try to push up. The concussive shell is finished. We even see a reaper popping out so we can get vision up on the high ground 
A Marine gets absorbed into the force field and manages to work his way out of that reality distortion field right there. We see tons of units from QXC just being rallied right up. Notice how low on Marauders he is. He's even getting that Reaper, which delays the Marauder production. And there's the push up. Immortal popping out. z feeling a little bit more in his comfort zone with that Sentry Immortal mix. But... That second gate has only just now started for Xerax, and we see the expansion also popping up now for QXC. Yeah, and Warp Gate Research just started as well, so it's almost as if he's going to have to rely on his Immortal production. And as you mentioned, wow, we got Reaper coming in here, but a few, a, a little bit more Marine heavy there for QXC. Let's see what this Reaper is going to do. Is it's going to swing all the way around outside the natural, make it into the main? That's not a super mobile army. He's going to take one, two, three hits, take out one pro. There we see a second one. And uh, before he is uh, taken out, but kind of displacing that Protoss army a little bit, got another mm -hmm, read on mm -hmm. it, knows that there's still no warp gate, and it's got to be thinking, gosh, there's not going to be a lot of units for the Protoss. Yeah, I mean, QXC is just playing out very, very well. And, you know, this is one of those moments where you start to think to yourself, wow, I didn't quite realize that there were this many vulnerabilities in this fast Immortal build. Generally, when you look at this Immortal build, you think about all your typical timing pushes, like how does the Marine Marauder fast push work against it? Well, we saw against Straylock, it gets crushed. How does some mid-game pushes work? Well, you know, against what we saw with Straylock, they get crushed. But then we see QXC coming out with two Marines at the start, even having a Reaper against this composition. Turns out to be surprisingly effective. This is a very muscular mix from Xerax, but it seems to struggle with that flexible element. Hmm. Uh, that's uh, some interesting points here. And uh, looks like uh, Xerax with that sort of uh, at least idea, thought, that he does want to uh, expand, which uh, would be obviously uh, somewhat of a logical a progression in the game as QXC though uh, just taking a look at the income tab is really towering over his opponent in all aspects uh, not mm -hmm. only in general income uh, maybe gas obviously just about the same uh, as we do I have a third refiner going up for QXC but QXC with a few more harvesters as well of course we have seen the Protoss player use those a little bit for defense and look at that Marine is going to spot this army coming up through the third and headed to QXC's natural and it looks like QXC is bringing forward all of those SCVs to be able to repair. There's the pylon from Xerax, just trying to finish now. It looks like a couple more units are popping forward. Another Immortal coming out. And it looks like Xerax is putting everything on this attack. There's the Guardian Shield going up. Beautiful force fields blocking off everything from that repair. But there's the sprint up. He picks off one Immortal, and a second one is going to fall. And that is an amazing arc right there by QXC. Xerax's push is getting completely and totally demolished. The Immortals just now catching up. Zealots trying to get into the fray, but there are not that many Marauders in that mix. So that is an easy micro situation with the Marines against Immortals. And Xerax is now in a total retreat mode. Yeah, this is going to be scary, too. He's going to have to get in. He's got no sentries out there. There's going to be no blocking of the force field. Here comes two sentries. This will be the only chance that he's got of staying alive. Um, and, oh, wow, QXC is just going to dominate the front door of his Protoss opponent. z left in his base with nothing more than what? A couple of sentries. And there he's wow. going to be forced out of it, tapped out. It was a triangle, and he just couldn't get any air. z says, GG. Wow. And QXC earns a spot in TSL3 and wins Team Speak. Team Liquid open number 13. Amazing. Just astoundingly solid play there by QXC, dealing with the variety that was getting thrown at him. Xerax, even though he had somewhat of a disappointing final series, getting 3-0'd, I think everyone is excited to see a player like Xerax come out on the scene, show us a pretty different way to play that rolled so many top players. So many top players got rolled by Xerax in this series. So big, big, big congrats to Xerax for making it so far, but QXC just seems to find every little hole and just jam units into it until Xerax crumbled. Totally, totally agree. You know, the guy deserves so much credit. You might go like, oh, QXC totally rolled over his 3-0, like what? But, you know, think about the amount of players that were actually in here and all of the BO1 situations that you're in. And then only recently was the round of 64 extended to a BO3. It really changes things, makes it 
very, very difficult to make their way through. So uh, the fact that we did see a new face in the grand finals, I think is just something special. And again, just shows that the evolution of the game and the players continues. And I think that it is absolutely phenomenal that such a fan favorite like QXC, a guy who comes out to every team liquid open and gives it his all plays uh, many of the, you know, online cups that take place throughout the week, uh, earned to spot in TSL number three. I think that's real, real noteworthy. Yes, yes, indeed. And once again, want to give a big shout out to Team Liquid for putting on such an awesome event for getting those sick invites today. EG Idra, Liquid Hey Pro, Liquid Rhett, TSL Fruit Dealer, and I am Nesty all to come out. Unbelievable, sick, great little set of invites there. And the Terran set will be announced next week. Oh, yeah. I know. Uh... It's like all the bad guys. Who are the bad guys of the tournament going to be? Did I say that really? I didn't mean it in that way. The bad guys. Uh, the, guys. <laughs> the, the evil the, folk? The Terran bad guys. Who are going to be the villains of the tournament? Oh, wait, no. That's not it at all. I'm really excited. Uh, just knowing what the Protoss and the Zerg have brought, day, hard to not get a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of nerd goosebumps, whatever Artosis calls them. A little excited for what will the come with the chills. TSL the geek, chills. The, the, the geek chills. There you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know what? Without any further ado, Weed, I would like to thank you for having a wonderful little cast with me. I would like to thank you as well, sir. And uh, I would just like to say um uh if you would would like to tomorrow tune in to weapon of choice at 2 p.m eastern standard time where chill and i will be discussing not only the team speak teal open number 13 but also uh, other great things in the starcraft community what about you what do you got coming up soon uh well 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 uh i do this show called the day nine daily and i think no. i'm just gonna kind of keep doing that yeah yeah oh yeah uh-huh uh-huh that's right i'll have to check that out sometime you know what? I would love it. I would love it. So uh, I had a blast today, sir. Thank you very much. I want to give a uh, big special shout outs and props to uh, everyone over on the Team Liquid staff. You know, especially today. It must have been a really good day. I don't know. Valentine's Day is coming up. Per perhaps he's got a hot date. He's just feeling really generous. But Hotbit gave us two bathroom breaks today. And I just really want to say thank you to him yes, um, yes, wow. for you know for for being that awesome to us and for all the hard work they do yeah yeah, yeah. big shout out woohoo all right so without any further ado peace out everyone rest well peace. go out and play starcraft 2